Hi, my name is Gideon. I'm also known as Gideon Slight. I'm a certified creatively fit coach and life coach. And I've come to the Pretoria National Botanical Gardens today to take you on a medicine walk. This is the first episode in my new series entitled Activating Your Creative Heart. And in this series I am really trying to show you that creativity is part of our human makeup. I am separating the idea that artistic skill and creativity is two very big different things. And it is easy for most of us to confuse artistic skill and talent and ability with that of creativity. So join me on this journey during the next few episodes as I showcase and invite you to activate your creative heart. I'll see you on the path. As I begin to walk in these beautiful gardens, I am just amazed at how these beautiful plants always keeps evolving and changing. And as I walk on this beautiful path, I'm surrounded with examples of creativity. Nature is creative. Everything around us in nature is part of a creative blueprint. You only have to pay a bit closer attention to your environment observe nature to see that creativity is not something that is learned in a classroom. Creativity is part of the blueprint of life. We are surrounded with it. And in this Activate Your Creative Heart series, I'm hoping to show you that creativity is part of your human inheritance. It is not reserved for artists. It is not reserved for special people with special skills and abilities those special ones it is in fact given as a gift in your DNA as a creation yourself by the Creator whoever you perceive that to be and your creative expression gives you a unique connection with the divine when you connect with creativity. I'm veering a little bit off the path here because this cathedral of trees just called me in to spend a few minutes here and to share with you a little bit about my intention during this amazing series that I am filming for you. So I'm going to sit on this bench and I'm going to swing the camera around and I'm going to talk with you a little bit. Sitting down on this beautiful bench is uh, just absolutely lovely 
it's been a while for me to get out of the house so to speak and uh, to sit in a beautiful forest like this and to just share with you is such a blessing um, it is new moon it is the 11th of January 2001 2021 sorry <laughs> me and my numbers and uh, I've come on a medicine walk so what is a medicine walk a medicine walk is something that uh, Native American tribe people do uh, I'm sure that a lot of uh, of the older tribes from various parts of the world will probably identify with what a medicine walk is but this particular idea comes from the Native American Indians and their uh, tribes used to go on medicine walks when they felt that their soul needed some answers needed some clarity and they would separate themselves from their tribe and they would go and be with nature and they would set a very specific intention to commune with the spirit nature around them and that they won't return to the tribe until they found their answer so it is absolutely a phenomenal experience when you go on a walkabout and you set that intention that you commune with all that is around you and that you ask for messages and for symbols and for clarity, insight into some of your current worries, concerns or challenges and uh, when you do that and you just switch off your technology for a bit and you spend a bit of time in nature or just outside of your home you can do this in New York City on the street you can do this anywhere in the world really um, you will be amazed at what jumps out at you what comes across your path that speaks to you and that communicates solutions and insights and wisdom to you. So part of this particular video series and for today's episode, it is my intention to gather natural materials, raw materials found here in the garden, leaves, sticks, stones, flowers, whatever mother nature offers up to me because I want to show you that creativity does not necessarily require a canvas and a brush. So if a canvas and brush intimidates you and you are still of the opinion that that is reserved for artists, I hope that this Activate Your Creative Heart series will prove you wrong and will show you that you can be creative with everything and anything that you find around yourself if you are only willing to look at it from a different perspective. So during this medicine walk I've asked Spirit and the Divine to guide me as I enjoy this beautiful garden today and uh, to take me on a path where I will find examples of how nature finds a creative way to survive and how creativity is embodied in nature around me so that I can showcase that to you. I've also asked for beautiful plant material that is willingly offered to me on my path that I can pick up and with that um, by the end of this medicine walk I'm going to be building a natural mandala. Now a natural mandala is something that anyone can do. My husband and I love to do that when we go on holiday. In fact I will share some images of our natural mandalas that we created on one of our holidays uh, near the coast in um, the Western Cape. And uh, we just found such beautiful 
a material on the beach um, and gathered it all and started building these beautiful mandalas of gratitude and it became an offering in the end of gratitude to the planet for that beautiful holiday that was gifted to us and for bringing us together as a couple oh just so many things in my heart at that moment that i was grateful for and in using this um, creative method of you know gathering whatever is around you to create something beautiful with that you sort of create an altar um, of gratitude uh, is such a profound experience because in being creative with whatever natural material you find around you uh, you automatically switch over to your right brain and you go almost into a meditative state and it's absolutely beautiful to see how you can flow in that um, situation and then in the end to dedicate that with your prayers of gratitude and to leave that behind with the knowing that maybe somebody will stumble upon it and maybe somebody will find it and will wonder who made this why did they make it it is so beautiful and in some way that energy of creativity that you leave behind will touch them in a random and beautiful way as well isn't that beautiful so i think that is exactly what i'm going to do and as i'm climbing up the mountain it is my idea to go to the waterfall to share that tropical aspect of this beautiful garden with you as well because there's a special message that i have for you uh, when we get to the waterfall so join me as i continue on my medicine walk you are invited along let's continue so this is the mandala that we created on the beach with shells and with coral and with flowers and with dead sea animals and um, just wanted to show you some of the detail of what we've assembled here. It's a beautiful little stream right next to me and I just found this secluded little path into this beautiful forest and it just is so amazing to be surrounded with green lush beautiful nature as far as I walk I'm very aware of divine presence around me and that I am surrounded with the creative spirit of Mother Gaia and as far as I walk I'm constantly on the outlook for elements to add to my mandala design just found this amazing spot where this tree is literally formed an arch this is its root area and how it's bent by nature forming this beautiful archway and look beyond it there is this 
beautiful tree that is literally growing inside the rock formation. This is yet another great example of how nature finds a way to survive. It finds a way to coexist with the environment. It doesn't fight against it. Here the roots are literally growing out of the rock or into the rock. This beautiful texture and pattern of the whole tree is just absolutely phenomenal. And what I'm getting at is that nobody taught this tree technique. Nobody taught this tree how to be creative, how to think creative, or how to be creative. It didn't attend a course on Udemy. It didn't go to university. It didn't even attend school. It is just one with nature. And yes, we as sentient beings have the ability to develop our higher thinking, our higher faculties. But I think we've become so filled with pride and we've become so disconnected from the fact that we as humans are part of creation. We are not separate from it. And yet we think of ourselves as the dominant force on the planet. But we forget that Mother Nature is the dominant force. We are also at her mercy. There is things we can do to destroy the environment. Yes, of course. Manipulate the environment. Yes, of course. We can blow this piece of rock apart with dynamite. Yes, of course. In fact, humanity is very good at destruction. But I feel that there's a lesson to be learned from Mother Nature as far as creativity is concerned. And that is to be a creative force. And hopefully you can see now what I mean with creativity equals life and life equals creativity. And we need creativity which is inherently part of our human DNA and makeup in order to continue to survive and to continue to evolve and continue to be the effective master creation of the great design of our universe. So with this beautiful sight that I was hoping to find here today to show you as an example I hope that you can begin to understand what I mean when I say that to be creative is inherently part of your DNA. It is not something that you can be taught. It is something that can be developed, but it is already within you. It is within your heart. And by spending a bit of time in Mother Nature, you automatically activate your own creative heart. I don't know if you can hear it but this beautiful bird song and I've reached this beautiful little creek and a little bridge and the water continuing down the mountain. I just love how the water flows clear, clean, beautiful and just to see in this beautiful lily pond how life in a very creative way survives in a completely different environment. These plants have evolved to survive in water and that in itself is an enormous creative act. I love how the light reflects 
on the surface of the water this dappled light gives us beautiful patterns and shapes that we can appreciate the contrast in the image it's almost a design element of mother nature the light and the dark and in the beautiful bright green lily pads floating on the crystal clear water you can see the leaves at the bottom of this pond giving us beautiful ambers burnt sienna yellow beautiful green I'm so enjoying my medicine walk today in the garden I'm now leaving the forest area and as I'm following this path I am entering more of a desert scape at least a semi-desert there's lots of succulents in this part of the garden more rocky more sandy and again the environment changes and mother nature adapts and she finds a way to preserve water and to flourish in an environment that is naturally more dry these aloes are a good example of how this plant will store its water in its leaves and uh, if it is a dry season this plant can survive without rain for many years because of its ability to store water in its leaves some of these plants like these red trees I think that's a direct translation out of Afrikaans I have to see on the plaque what it's really called is ancient it comes from dinosaur time really that is absolutely phenomenal Absolutely love the shape of these trees that could be so pretty to paint I'm just gonna continue I see something in the distance there this is an ancient grass and I would like to share that with you this is a beautiful prehistoric grass it is amazing how thick each blade of grass is and how strong and robust it is I mean I'm gonna put my hand next to it so you can get an idea of how big these blades of grass are this is from prehistoric dinosaur time this could be the grass that the cows of, of the dinosaur era grazed on and it's still with us it's right here I can touch it it's amazing the species is millions of years old again look at the beauty of this tree how it bend and how it branches continues to grow in order to catch the best light it didn't complain you don't hear it moaning and bitching because it's not growing straight and perfect and you know like a supermodel of a of the tree world it simply is and it is standing in its own right and it is beautiful because of it's perceived imperfections due to its environment that forced it to grow in a different but yet beautiful manner 
let's continue our walk as I come down the mountain into this basin into this rocky valley we find more beautiful succulent plants and beautiful blue skies and just enjoying the beauty and creativity that is seen all around me the shape of the leaves the shape of the plants and how it arranges itself in this landscape it's absolutely beautiful I must admit I was hoping for a lot more flowers today but it is what it is this beautiful greenery so I think the green connects us with our heart center and it is our heart center that we want to activate and open with beauty and creativity and I think the beautiful green garden today serves exactly that beautiful purpose let's continue on our medicine walk finally bumped into some flowers and the beautiful coral orange of these flowers stands out so beautifully in contrast with the green isn't it stunning this immediately captured my attention it's like the garden said over here there's flowers over here <laughs> So I'm gonna see if I can get some of these flowers to add some color to our natural mandala all these specks of coral and orange has come into my vision as I continue down this path I'm back in the forested area of the garden and I think I found the sacred spot where I want to build my earth altar right here in the center of this cathedral of trees around me is this beautiful stone and this is going to be the table on which I'm going to build my natural mandala so I'm going to have a bit of my breakfast as a snack and see what else I can gather there's plenty of greenery and interesting material around me and I'm going to build a very simple yet beautiful mandala on the stone so I'll be right back so like I said before this is the altar I'm going to be building my mandala on and uh, there's not a good camera angle for me so I'm going to be holding my camera in uh, my hand and then I'll just zoom out as I go so I found all of these things on my medicine walk this morning <clears throat> some sticks and stones and some flowers so let me just get this out of the bag 
right so let's get to it i got everything out of my bag and this is my altar and i brought with me a beautiful crystal from my altar at home and i'm going to use this as my center point in my design so i'm just going to place it there i think if you want to build a mandala Remember a mandala is in essence really a Sanskrit word for circle or sacred circle So you want to have a central point and from that point Outwards in some radial direction you want to begin to place your objects now I brought some stones, I mean some sticks So let's create some Direction with our sticks like so so that way we basically create four quadrants and that can mean so much it can mean the four elements earth water fire air it can mean north south east west all of these things it's the meaning that you will assign to it that will come to life the stone is giving us a beautiful neutral and dark background for everything that we're going to place on the altar to begin to tell a story so i've got some other sticks as well that I think can create some beautiful texture I'm sorry if I'm shaking a lot because I'm having to bend and pick up some sticks but I do want you to be part of this creation as I assemble it so when you gather things on your medicine walk uh, hopefully all of you will go out of to a garden somewhere or whatever and try to have this experience yourself so one of the tips I can give you is that when you gather material as you go around to always keep in mind that you need a certain number of things like I make sure I've got four sticks I've got four of these curvy branches because I know I want to work in these four quadrants and then fill it up with everything that I've gathered on my journey got some berries for some greenery isn't it beautiful how the Sun is capturing exactly now the crystal I didn't plan for this I promise you this just happened and when you work in concert with mother nature she brings all the drama and fireworks to the show isn't that pretty already oh my word right i've got some beautiful leaves here so i think what i'm going to do now is i'm going to pause the video and pick up some leaves and arrange them on the altar and i will see you just now this is so amazing. I absolutely love the contrast that we have on the stone and the color of Mother Nature against this beautiful stone <laughs> is simply spectacular. It is taking my breath away. <laughs> so let me get the flowers and just bring it closer. One more. Where else can I put a leaf? 
so these flowers I'm going to arrange near the center of the design in whichever way it wants to live and uh, got these little felt flowers next to the road as well let's do that in a radial way and one more around there you get the gist of it you get the idea you can see how creative a little project like this can be it is something that you can do when you go for a family picnic and involve the entire family by sending them out on a mission to gather materials for your gratitude altar and uh, at a specific time you gather around and you put this altar together it really is a flower arrangement for using another term that is maybe less intimidating to some belief systems but really you can see the beauty in it and you can see how creative this is and the mere fact that I haven't used paint or a brush or a canvas it shows you that creativity can be sparked by using what is in your immediate environment this altar became my canvas the natural material became my brush strokes and the placement on this altar became my composition within the composition there's contrast there's rhythm there is um, repetition there is values there is harmony all the design principles that I teach on my creative heart group is found in this single installation on a rock in a park in Pretoria and it is so spectacular it is so uplifting I can feel how open my heart is I can feel how connected I am with mother nature I can feel the excitement and the creativity just flowing through my veins this is just so beautiful to behold I'm gonna give one last walk around my environment and see if I can find some last elements to add to this if anything at all I'll see you just now and my altar is complete and now I dedicate this altar to Mother Earth and to every sentient being on this planet may everyone be free from danger may everyone be happy May everyone be healthy and may everyone achieve enlightenment in this lifetime. It is my prayer that everyone be safe and protected during 2021 and that everyone embrace their creative spirit, their creative heart and allow this creativity to be activated so that we as a humanity can begin to create the miracles that we need in order to move forward I asked mother nature to cast some beautiful light on this altar so that we can see the light so beautifully 
reflecting just wanted to show you this canopy under which I'm standing where this beautiful altar is look at these beautiful lines dappled light bright greens and yellows moving into the dark onto the forest bed and onto this beautiful mandala I'm just so grateful my heart is overflowing with gratitude as I experience nothing short of a miracle today as everything came together I didn't know how this will play off it just did and when I saw this spot I just knew in my heart this is exactly where the magic is going to happen and it did and for that I'm eternally grateful so I'll see you at the waterfall We are approaching the waterfall in the more tropical part of the garden. Like the sound of the frog. As I continue up the path to go to the bigger part of the waterfall, I'll share with you more. So I'm at the waterfall and as you can hear the sound of the water rushing down the mountain is just spectacular. So as I come to a close in this first episode of activating the sacred heart I want to bust another myth surrounding creativity and that is the idea that creativity is limited and that you need inspiration and the right environment and the right situation uh, all kinds of things in order to be creative and I'm here today to show you that nature proves us wrong. Creativity is never ending. It is infinite, like the infinite drops of water that is cascading down this waterfall. So abundant are we in creativity and in creation. It is unlimited because the soul and the higher consciousness is unlimited. So I want you just to take a few moments now and just close your eyes and just listen to the sound of the waterfall. I want you to imagine that you can step into this pool of water beneath the waterfall and sit on that stone and allow the water to just drop on your head and to wash away all ideas of limitation all limiting beliefs that you are not creative that that is a talent or a gift that is reserved for other people I want you to bathe yourself in the abundance of mother nature surround yourself with the creativity of creation and remember in your heart of hearts that you too are a creative being it is part of your inheritance 
It is part of who you are. Embrace it, drink it in, and allow it to be washed down into your body, into every cell of your being. Call it forth in remembrance. And in your heart right now, say these words with intention. I willfully choose to activate my creative heart here and now. I willfully choose and I remember that I am a creative heart. I am creative. I am a creative soul and so it is. Wow, what a journey this was today, right? I'm so grateful that you came along with me into this beautiful garden today to explore our creative heart activation right in the midst of Mother Nature. I hope that you enjoyed building the very natural earth mandala with me and that some of what I shared with you today resonates deeply with you. I hope that you've remembered deep in your soul and in your heart of hearts that you are a creative being because you were created by an infinitely creative being. And if you believe that we are created in the image of our creator, let me then remind you that you too are a creator. Allow the creator of all that is to flow through you and to express creatively your beautiful spirit which is an embodiment of the divine right here on earth. I'm looking forward to sharing with you in our next episode when we explore a little bit further in how we can use mindfulness in order to activate our creative art. I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching. Stay blessed. Bye-bye.